today, I will start with these this messages. Uh, half of my presentation will be about laser physics and mechanism of laser treatment, and another half will be for the clinicians to choose a good laser and how to use laser adequately. Yeah. Let's talk about some history things. Mm. Here in the slide, you can see some metal, metal mirror. It's a concave mirror called as Yangsu. Yangsu means ignition mirror. And in the book of Dong Bogam, which is the original textbook of Korean medicine published in Joseon Dynasty at 15th century, uh, at that book, there are a paragra paragraph of Yangsu that is written as they used Yangsu to catch a fire for moxibusan. Mm -hmm. And a Chinese book, the name of name of history of moxibusan. In that book, they are saying that there are many kind of moxibusan other than that of Artemisia moxibusan. There are right moxibusan and electrodermal moxibusan, even if cryotherapy, they are, they are including cryotherapy to the moxibusan criteria. And, and we published a, a, a journal article about Yangsu and the history of moxibusan to, to present that modern tool of moxibusans like lasers and light therapies uh, also can be included in the line of line of right moxibusan in the in the uh, in the past. Yeah. In Western medical history, in 1920s, doctors used sun baths to treat the vitamin D deficiency rickets. It is called heliotherapy, and at that time. They can, they can only use the natural light source to treat diseases. And with the technology improvement, we can, we can use artificial light source like, like light bulbs or ultraviolet light. That, that light is from ultraviolet emitting lamp. And in, in, tw in 1923, Russian doctors uses ultraviolet light to irradiate on blood blood to to take a effect of antibiotics because at that time we have no antibiotics at all and well, yes a famous man Albert Einstein is very important person in the history of razor because every razor adapted his theory to make a razor right. And in the middle of 50s, 1950s, Towns and Shorrow made the first form of razor, which is called major because it's not made of more right but but microwave right. Yes, the first of razor in the history, it's made by Theodore Maiman. He was a scientist of a huge aircraft company. The first kind of laser was made of ruby. The medium of ruby lasers was the first, first thing. And this, this man, Ali Jabin, he had made helium neon laser, which is the first medical laser used for acupuncture treatment. Yes, I think this is the most difficult part of my presentation. Yes, we are very familiar with laser because we can we can use laser in our daily life, like like this and other things. Laser is the short term for light application by stimulated emission of radiation. Sti stimulated emission, that theory is, 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 uh, was, was the Einstein found it. And 
Mm, let's picture this. This picture is, is, a, is a simple form of one atom. <coughs> atom. And every atom has nucleus and electrons. And when, uh, when a energy, which is can be any kind of energy. Uh, it can be a light and other lasers and thermal energies. When atom give energy from outside of, of, it, of its, its, its shell, electrons catch the energy and jump to the excited state. And with some time, the electron emit the energy and down to the ground level, which is a st which is a stable statement. And some kind of mediums, radio mediums, have two states of excited level. One is E2 excited level, the top side, and the middle side, metal table state. Uh, energy of electron is, is emitted by uh, from excited level 2 to metastable states, and it emits a, a, a spontaneous emission of light. It is called spontaneous emit of light, and that light can, can come into original medium, and it takes second, the identical light from spontaneous emission light. So, so due to external energy emitting, emitting the first light, the first light go into the atom and make second light. The second light, the identical to the first emitted light, is called stimulated emission of light. That is the origin of laser light. Yes. Let's go to the medium of the one atom. Uh, the three it's very hard to view. Yeah, these three three pictures, uh, picture of a radio medium, and this square thing is a medium, and beside it two mirrors. One is called mirror, and one is called window, because mirror reflects one hundred percent of light, and window reflects about ninety eight percent of light. Some very small amount of light can pass through the mirror. In the medium with energy pumping, it, it makes stimulated emission of light. And this light is, is traveling between mirror and the window and make it strength, strength of light. So, so the strengthened light is passed through the window and that is the razor we can see. Uh, this picture is, is kind of a ruby laser light. The uh, external pumping light source is a flash light, very high energy of light. And, and uh, inside it, there are loads of ruby crystallized, crystalline ruby. And in the ruby, there are, there are, mm, there are phenomena of stimulated emission of light. And this road is a, is, a, is a mirror, mirror and the window. So the laser light is, goes through the window and make these things. Mm. If you have any kind of laser and you, you make laser to your palm, you can see some specific, um, specific figures in the laser light, which is, which is something like some bug that is called speckle. And the speckle is, is made by these, these three unique characteristics of razors. All kind of razors have these, these three characteristics. One is for monochromatic. It means single wavelengths and single color. Because uh, during, during the stimulated emission of light, the one color of light, one wavelength of light is made in, and other, other, other light is, is not made in. So all, every kind of laser have one, one wavelength and one color. 
And secondly, the coherence, which is called, in other words, interference. It is made from reflecting, continuous reflecting of light. So during the reflecting and reflecting, the rays is aligned to one line. So have coherent specification. And the last one is collimitated, the directionality. Because rays has only one wavelength, only one color, one kind of light, and it's very aligned, so it, it can gain the directionality of light. And with this razor, razor specifications, we are using in medical field this kind of razors. Uh, this table is classified was classified razors by its, its medium, the right, right source. It's crystalline razors and semiconduct razors, liquid razors and gas razors. And I wanna, I wanna say about semiconduct razors mainly because it's the main kind of razor which is used in razor acupuncture field. Some other ways to classify the razors. One thing is by wavelengths, and which is uh, which is consists of three subtypes: visible types and ultraviolet types and infrared types. And by its application, which is Professor Zhang said already about the surgical lasers things and non-surgical lasers, which is called therapeutic lasers using photobiomodulation effect. And the last one is by intensity. The standard is standard watts was one watt, a thousand milliwatts. And yes, I can pass it through. Surgical lasers and non-surgical lasers both have PBM effects because CO2 lasers, a very, very <coughs> good model of uh, Surgical lasers also have photo PBM effects, and some low level lasers with high power output can be used as scalpels like, like CO2 lasers and excimer lasers. Yes, the problem of intensity. Uh, to gain the PBM effect, one should keep adequate range of power output because there are biphasic dose response which is means too small power output we cannot get good effect too much of power output it also make no if no effect we already see this slide we can we can skip it yes this is what is what is <coughs> what is called photobiotic modulation effect in one cell. Uh, when our body get right, sunlight and other things, our our cell have our each cell have mitochondria. Every cells and in the mit mitochondrial membrane especially the inner membrane, which is called the respiratory chain, there are an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidases when right, especially the red right, about wavelengths about 700 nanometers, that kind of light into the cell membrane, into the inner membrane of mitochondria, the cytochrome C oxidase is activated without any other stimulations, <laughs> any, any other half of, of enzymes and energies. The right activates this enzyme, and this enzyme is the key factor for ATF, ATP synthesis, the battery of every cell. So, uh, when right is come into the cell, the right, the right can activate the cell activate cell functions and make it some good effects on our body and tissues. Yes, this part is for the clinicians. And I said that some kind of razors are good for acupuncture treatment 
it is it is why some razors are more suitable for acupuncture treatment and which is not suitable uh, in our body there are some compositions like this and uh, this axis is, is for the wavelengths and the y axis is for the absorption coefficient so uh, most popular razor type for razor acupuncture is gallium, aluminum, arsenide razors, which is have wavelengths about around 800. And with these razors, the razors can go into our body, muscle tissues and, and other things, because at that area, the lipids, water, and hemoglobins, the, the blood, merely absorbed energy so the right energy can go through our body deep deep our body to the acupoint in the deep point and this one CO2 razor carbon dioxide razor is very very friendly to the water so 80% of our body is made up of water from the surface of our dermis so when CO2 razor is into our body, the very superficial tissues and cells absorb the CO2 razor energy and make it hit. Yes, almost the same figures. Uh, these razors, gallium aluminum arsenide razors and gallium arsenide razors and gallium razors and helium neon razors are used for <coughs> It's very friendly for muscle or skin or muscle. And CO2 razors are not friendly. So like this, like this. So mm, these figures can talk to us that some kind of razors is good for razor acupuncture, for muscle treatment, or, or tendon, or other things. Yes. Uh, this part is some kind of razors. The helium neon razor was the first kind of razor which is used in acupuncture treatment. And it's invented in early 60s and 70s. The Russian clinicians was the first man to use it. And 80s, Chinese clinicians, TCM doctors used it mainly for blood irrad irradiation because helium neon razors are very familiar with hemoglobin, so it can give its energy to the blood. So they use this for lipid profile modulation. And in 90s, Korean doctors, especially Korean medical doctors, start using helium neon razors for their acupuncture treatment. And this razor is made of, of a gas and the gas chamber of razor is very hard to manage and some kind of expensive devices. So it is almost, almost changed with indium razors, indium aluminum, aluminum phosphate razors. Indium razors are almost the same, have same wavelengths, the same wavelengths and same effect on our body. So these razors was popular in 90s or in early early 20s mm, early 20 uh, 2010s and this is this razor is visually safe and mm, mainly have power output under 50 milliwatts which is very low power lasers so we don't need to take any protective eyeglasses and this man, this man have their eye patch is because in the blind study. In the clinic, we don't need to use eyeglasses to patient or to clinicians. And this type of razors, gallium aluminum arsenide razors, is the most popular and most effective razors, razor types for acupuncture treatment. Because this razor can penetrate our body to five centimeters to eight centimeters maximum. And in our body, 
Uh, most acupuncture point is, is located in the depths under three, three centimeters. So with this razor, we can use almost about 90% of acupoint to, to make acupuncture stimulation. And this razor is, is harm to eye. So both clinicians and patients need to wear protective eyewears. Yes, and this is the last one of semiconductor razors, gallium arsenide razors, which is the most powerful type of uh, semiconductor razors. These razors can penetrate our body to over 10, ce 10 centimeters. So we can use in the deep muscles and very deep, deep places of inflammations or pain sites. Yes, the last one, carbon dioxide razors, which is very familiar to water and can only use in the very superficial point of our body. But this razor gives the razor energy to water and make heat. The heat is, very, is, is useful for moxibustion because uh, when, when you use moxibustion with fire and artemisia, we are very very vulnerable for, for heat burns. But razor with, with no, no chemical, chemical material can be very, very useful for making a clean heat stimulation. Yes. Uh, the World, World Razor Associ Association, they published two guidelines for gallium lasers and gallium arsenide razors. The main part of razor, which is used in acupuncture treatment. Mm. <coughs> uh, I can present one, one example. The first one, when you treat, treat <coughs> copper tunnel syndrome, you can, we can use two or three points with eight joules per point and the minimum dose is four joules per point. And you can, you can find the effectiveness uh, within two weeks or, or three or four weeks with daily, daily session or, or the day uh, three times a week sessions. Um, like gallium lasers, Gallium arsenide razor, you can use copper tunnel syndrome for two or three points, for four joules one, for one point. And we can adapt those changes for pain control uh, with 50% with, with plus or minus from starting, starting those. And when inflammatory symptoms is relieved, we can use minus 30% of initial dose. Yes, this may be the rest slide. And this for clinicians with, with, with uh, yes, it's for clinicians, very simple tables. You can only think about your razor, razor power output and the time. When your power output is fixed, for example, and the uh, 500 milliwatt, and when you when you use with normal normal inflammation or pain types, you can use four joules. Remember, if you want to four joules to one acupoint with your 500 milliwatt devices, you can take your devices to the acupoint and just wait for three seconds, and you can get about 1.5 joules. If you use 4 joules, you can wait for 8 or 10 seconds. So it's very easy to use. Just for seconds and your, your power output. Thank you very much.